Do online meetings make you sleepy, grumpy, cause headaches or nausea? You may be suffering from Zoom fatigue. The medicine you need is J Man Speaks. Let's go! This is Jeremiah J Man Manero with J Man Speak. J Man to the rescue! There's no sleeping in this Zoom. Edutainment. High energy. Yahoo! Wake up. Wake up. Your head's going to explode. Ooh. Yeah. Ah! Refreshingly authentic. Come with me if you want to live. Side effects will include extreme joy or euphoria, enhanced learning, increased energy and motivation, and feelings of invincibility. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Jeremiah J. Man Monero with J. Man Speaks, and welcome to A Team Friday. That's right, we got the A Team. Gonna hit you off with some music. Hold on, let's give you the round of applause first. Thanks for tuning in. Good morning to Teresa. Good morning to Rhonda from California. You are up early. We appreciate you tuning in. We appreciate you tuning in right now. Uh, we're getting our microphone situation taken care of because for some reason. My good mic is not hooked up right now, but we're going to go to the AirPods for a second, and then we're going to switch over. So as I get started, uh, we're here, we're talking about home equity estimates, and I want you to, here, we're going to go over. A little bit better. Check one, two, one, two. Okay. Trinity, Florida. Welcome. Welcome. So we got Florida. We got California. Teresa, I think you're from Illinois, right? Um, correct me if I'm wrong. But... Uh, a term you may not be familiar with is a home equity estimate because I think I might have created it or maybe I heard it somewhere and then I don't remember where so now I'm just I'm going to claim it for myself but a home equity estimate is what you would call a comparative market analysis right we've been saying that so many years uh, in real estate like would you like a comparative market analysis or a CMA on your property today and Look at a lot of, oh, Teresa's in Austin, Texas. Uh, so, man, we got, we're all over the U.S. today. I love it. Um, and, and thanks for tuning in so early because for those of you West Coast, Mountain Times, and, and that, oh, we got James Jock Plattsburgh in the house. So I'm going to add all you guys here. Shout out to, to Jeffrey. Shout out to James. Shout out to Teresa. Here we go. Shout out to Sue. Shout out to Rhonda. I think I got everybody for right now. All right, so uh, a home equity estimate is nothing more than a comparative market analysis, but I like to use terms that are that our consumer, that our client, that our potential clients can understand, right? Uh, because if I say comparative market analysis, it sounds nerdy and like I don't even know what you're saying, right? If I'm not in real estate. But if you say home equity, I know what home equity is. Oh, I know what that is. Would you like a home equity estimate? It's an estimate of how much, uh, how much equity you have in your home. Uh, there was a small company that rhymes with pillow that became very popular because they were giving people an anonymous depiction of value, right? Which meant we were still trying to be the gatekeepers for a decade saying, if you would like a comparative market analysis, you need to register on our website or I need to come over and see the house because we wanted to get the listing, right? And then there was tech companies out there were saying, hey, you want to know what your house is worth? Come to our site. We'll do it for you for free. It's not going to be very accurate, but who cares? That's not why you're doing it anyways, right? That's exactly what they did. So people could anonymously get a somewhat quasi-accurate depiction of value on their property and decide whether they wanted to sell their home, right? You should have been thankful all those years that those estimates of value were inaccurate because it made your phone ring right when the seller went and go oh wow that's what my house is worth that's fantastic they would then pick up the phone and call you and then it was up to you to educate them on the market realities so how i've used this recently i could say recently as in just a few days ago right would you agree that all of our markets are a seller's market i haven't run into anybody who is not in a seller's market currently like a really great seller's market. So we need the listings. And if you are not 
if you're in a market that's balanced or it's somewhat, a, it, maybe it's a buyer's market. I don't know. It's like the unicorn out there on an island somewhere. Uh, let us know because we'll bring people to your market and buy it all. We will buy it all up. Uh, let's see what we got here. Oh, from Chai Town. We got Venetia from Chai Town. How you doing? Uh, so I I did a video this week and, and I'll post a link in, in the comments uh, because I'm not going to want to share the video because it's self-promoting, but uh, I'll put it in the comments. You can watch it at your leisure, but here's how the video went. I basically gave a quick rundown uh, where I'm from, Rochester, New York, was recently voted uh, one, the sixth most affordable place to live by Forbes magazine, okay, based on quality of life, based on uh, the price of the available homes, et cetera, so on and so forth. So find something great about your uh, your area. Maybe you guys have Amazon moving in. Maybe it's just a great city altogether. Know your numbers, though, right? So when I was Pull out my piece of paper here. When I was doing my video, I had my median sale prices from our um, annual report on the Greater Rochester Housing Market that came from my local real estate board. So all of you should have a report for the entire year of 2020. This is where you get your facts from. I will never, when it comes to real estate and it comes to talking about the market, I will always be factual. I never use a script, but I will always reference the data. You never want to misspeak on data because somebody will call you out and then you lose all integrity. Um, yeah, we're no longer the gatekeepers. That's right. Curators and clarifiers. I like that. So I had my statistics and I, I did my video and I was there. Um, I, I picked three different areas of, of the city of Rochester. City of Rochester has the city, right? City proper. And then we have all these little suburbs. Just like uh, if you're in New York, right, you have Queens. Queens isn't a place you live. You live you live in Ozone Park or you live in Richmond Hill or you live in uh, Whitestone. You know, you live in these different areas of Queens. Um, same thing, Staten Island, you have your, your different areas. You know, Illinois is the same way. Everybody, everywhere is the same. So I, I picked three different areas. I picked the city of Rochester. Then I picked a west side suburb because for us, west side is the different market. It's more blue collar. Um, and then we have the east side, which is more white collar. And I picked, two, you know, those two suburbs. So I had east side suburb, west side suburb, and the city of Rochester. I then, I went over to my whiteboard. And I had not prepared to do this, but hold on. I'll go over to the whiteboard to show you. And I went over here. Do, do, do. Let me move that for a second. There we go. So I came over to the whiteboard, and you don't have to do get all fancy. This you could do this with a handheld whiteboard, and just go. Okay, here's the statistics in Rochester. Okay, in Rochester, it was this. This is the actual number, fifty-four point six percent. I got to remember to throw away that marker because it sucks. Um, but give them examples, right? Our market, let's say, city of Rochester property. that they bought in 2016 that was valued at $50,000 because that's what our average sale price price was in the city. Now in 2021 is up 54.6%, which makes it worth, I don't know, $76,400. Okay, that's, that's significant, $26,400. And then I would write that there. The suburbs would be a little bit more, so I would go like, I'm going to give you real numbers here. If if the town of Greece was 117, this is where I grew up, 117,500. Greece, this is a west side suburb. It is now 155,000. Okay, and that is 36.5%. In the plus. And then I did an east side one, which was Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. I'm going to say Pitt. And that was 275,000. Is now 350. Okay, so these numbers will look even better for you if you're in a market where your average sale price is much higher than mine. Um, but that's a, that's 27.3%. Okay, 
okay? Money, okay? And then, you know, you put over here whatever the differences are there. That's 37,000. I don't know. This is, that's significant. That's 75 more thousand dollars than they thought their home might be worth, okay? That's what I did. You could lay that out on a piece of paper, but let me come back over here. Um, that's what I did to demonstrate. And then I, I did a little picture of a table. And then I put, nobody wants to leave money on the table. Right? And then I, I crossed it out on the whiteboard. Go get yourself a whiteboard at the, at the dollar store or something like that. I think I got that at, at like a five below or someplace. It might have been under 10 bucks. I use it all the time. Okay? But even if it's a, you can definitely get one at the dollar store and you can just hold up a whiteboard like this and do your numbers right here while you're on camera. Okay? That's the first step. And say, look at the next thing that I did is I said, when was the last time you found out what your home is worth? Did you realize that it's worth that much more? Well, if you reach out to us, we're more than happy to give you a home equity estimate free of charge. You don't have to call us. You don't have to text us. You don't even have to email us using our bot. And I'll, I'll, I'll put a link in the, in the comments for you guys to, to see how this works. But using the bot, you can click the link or scan the QR code and answer a couple questions and we'll have it to you within 24 hours. That easy. And I said it just like that. Like, look it, you don't have to talk to me. At all. Ever. <laughs> okay. You answer the questions. I do the home equity estimate and I send it to you within 24 hours. If you have any additional questions, we'd be happy to help, of course. But maybe you realize how much your home is worth. And, and my motivation isn't always to list a home. You have to remember that, right? We're in the, the relationship building business. And I might say to them, wow, did you realize you had that much equity? Why don't you do a cash out refi? Maybe your interest rate was four and a half or six. You know more or less how long ago they purchased their home. And if you were their agent, you know more or less what their interest rate was at that time. Like do a cash out refi, take some money and do an addition to the house, right? Because we've all realized how much we did not like our home after staying in it for almost a year, right? Do the addition to the house, do the home office, do the home studio, do anything that you want to do. We have trusted uh, mortgage professionals that we can refer you to. Or maybe it's time for you to do the, that kitchen, do the bathroom, do anything else that you want to do to the home. We also have people in, in those industries that we'd be happy to refer to you and help out. And at the end of the flow, the end of the conversation, I then hit him with another bonus. Um, it's a, and I want you to write this down, cost versus value report, okay? Cost versus value report. Every year, shout out to, to Michael, how are you? Um, every year, Remodeling Magazine puts out uh, a cost versus value report. That that basically is uh, what the return on investment is for major improvements to the home. Okay, I give that to them. Again, all of this is about providing value and resources so that they pick you as an agent. I'm, I'm not a closer. Look at I have a, a, um, a cup that says coffees for closers. It's, it, it's totally empty. Do I drink coffee from it? Of course. Uh, but it's not that old school closing mentality, it's about being that resource and, and interpreting all the data for them, right? So I give them the return on investment to make those decisions because maybe they don't want to sell, but guess what? Two years from now, five years from now, you're going to be happy you had that conversation with them because they did an addition to the home. They did a, a, a drop dead kitchen with that money. And now you've got this property that's even better, uh, that's even more marketable that you can, you can help them sell. Or here's the other side of it. Maybe they can take that equity and purchase investment properties. Okay, it doesn't have to be local, but if it is local, that's great. Uh, they can purchase investment properties. Maybe they can buy a second home, right? Airbnb kind of a scenario or a VRBO, vacation rental by owner. I, I have many clients, even in this market, that are purchasing second homes and they pay for themselves. And that would probably be a different conversation. Um, another video that I would make, actually, I think I'll make that next week, um, but explaining how that works, right? But you got to give people ideas of what to do. The point is that you're top of mind and you're providing the service. Let me, I'm going to put the home equity estimate link into the chat here. 
This is a demo one. This doesn't go to my real estate bot, okay? So you don't have to worry about me following up with you in regards to uh, selling your home. Hold on. Got to bring it over here. Do, do, do. do we have any questions as we go? Where do we find that? Oh, Jennifer, how are you? Um, where do we find what? The home equity estimate or clarify your question, please. Do, 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 do. I'm going to show you how you, how you create the, uh, I'm going to demonstrate RPR here in a second. And I know some of you, well, if you're a realtor, you have access to RPR. Um, if you're an agent, I know like some of our, our New York Metro folks, or there's people all throughout the country that aren't necessarily realtor members, they won't have access to RPR, but Cloud CMA, you know, there's a number of different options for you. I'm um, put this. All right, so Jen, I, uh, I put in the comments, this is the home equity estimate flow that I use. And this is a chat bot that I created. If you want more information on that, you let me know. Sir Bottlelock can help you out, kick them nasty bots. But what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna share my screen just to give you like a behind the scene, behind the scenes look at how this works. Uh, there we go, baby. Uh, let's see if I wanna zoom this a little bit. Do, 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 do. All right, so this is what I just posted in the chat. This is what a flow looks like. And I'm gonna zoom it in a little bit so that you guys can get a better idea. Okay, so this is a scripted conversation, right? If I ask somebody, have you ever had a home equity estimate done before? Yes, no, or what is that? Those are the three options, right? If they say yes, awesome. Would you like to get a current one? All you have to do is answer a few questions. If they say no, would you like to get one today? All you have to do is answer a few questions. If they say, what is that? It's an estimate. Well, I got a typo there. Um, it's an estimate of how much money you might walk away with if you decided to sell in today's market. Would you like to get one today? All you have to do is answer a few questions. So regardless of what the response is, I'm directing them right back to where I want the conversation to go. Once you become a skilled conversationalist, right, which is what you should be in, in real estate, you can direct the conversation. So then it goes, what is the property address with city, state, and zip? Waiting for a reply from, from a contact. All of these contact um, their replies it's a fill in it's a fill in the, the blank response and it's saved so it's going to save for you on, on a separate sheet it then goes hold on one second I gotta fix my fade level okay there um, you can see here then how much you own your current mortgage do you have any credit lines or liens to pay off on the property oh shoot I gotta delete that I was messing with it earlier so I did that twice um, I'll delete that. And then it says, please list all improvements you've been made to the property since you've been there with the date and how much it costs. The reason why we ask how much uh, were the home improvements and when was it done is because when we plug this information into the realtor property resource, um, it allows us to refine the value based on home improvements, but it also depreciates those improvements over time, right? If you do a new kitchen yesterday, it adds more value to the property than a new er, right? We love that er in real estate. Um, it, it has more value than that new earth kitchen that was done 10 years ago or five years ago. So it'll depreciate that asset over time automatically for you, right? This was one of the biggest challenges I had when I started in real estate. Like how much value do we add for a new deck or a new, you know, right? And, and it has all those major home improvements, finished basement, deck, bathrooms. Um, I think it has flooring, roofing, front door, garage door the major home improvements that can be done on the home, okay? Um, reply from con contact. And then when that's all done, see it says here, um, notify admins, five people via email. So I got five admins on this, this specific bot itself. But if you're part of a team or, or you have an admin that, that's more responsive than you are, it sends you an email going, hey, somebody came into the bot and did a home equity estimate. You better get on it, okay? I still have there that we're gonna contact them within 24 hours, right? Let's see what it says here. Yeah, so thank you for all the deets. We will compile your report and have it to you within 24 hours via email. We promise that this is a no obligation estimate of what your home might be worth. Is this the best email, right? And it actually pulls their email that's um, connected to their Facebook. And if it's not the best email, then they're gonna put it there. Again, 
they're going to put the right information, more accurate information, because they want it from you. You're not trying to sell them something. They don't see you as a salesperson. You're providing a service that they value. Now it's going to be accurate and, and they're going to want to reach out. Okay, well, we'll send it there. Please contact us if you have any other questions uh, when you receive it. P.S. Here's the free gift on the ROI for home improvements. Again, who doesn't want that? Especially now when people are going to start to get their tax money. Maybe they're going to get their, uh, what do they call it, pandemic money? I don't know. I'm not kidding, man. Make too much money. Um, whatever that's called. The extra money there. And maybe they want to do that towards home improvements. Okay? And actually, while we're here, I'm going to show you how I'm going to edit this and take out that section. Did I made a boo boo? I'm going to come in here and then I'm going to delete this one. Delete user input. Yes. And then I'm going to publish that. All right. That's done. All right. So that's the behind the scenes look. We had a ton, ton of this, a uh, ton of these. Whoop. Let me back up here so you can see the whole thing. And then I'm going to back up. Okay. It's as far as it goes. Okay. Great. Is it as far as it goes? Can't be. Okay, any questions on that while I'm going over to the RPR? No? Okay. So I've already set this up. Um, if, you, if you're a realtor member, you're going to have access to RPR, the Realtor Property Resource. Again, I can't, I'm not going to go over how to set up your account. There's a ton of information out there that you can, you can figure that out. Uh, but here's a property that I, I've already listed. I didn't want to do a property that maybe it was in the works. Um, so 172 Seneca Ave, right? So I come in here, you have the history of the property, right? If I'm talking to somebody about listing their home, you can go in there um, or you get that information from them putting it in there. You can go in here and see, look, this property did have a distress action back in 19. Okay, Liz Pendence was filed for one of 2019. Okay, it was actually sold at auction in, in, in December. Um, and now it's sold again. You can look up historical records and everything. So you'll know like if, if somebody's distressed, somebody did a forbearance, somebody's behind in their mortgage, all of that stuff is filed with your county clerk's office typically. When that's recorded, it's then inputted into the system, right? That distress action you see, my finger looks long. <laughs> The stress action that you see right there. Uh, so if somebody calls about a pre-foreclosure, you could do the same thing, right? Come in here. It'll tell you who, who filed it, what, what attorney did it, et cetera. But I'm going to go over here to refined value. So the refined value, it's called the realtor valuation model. That's just a marketing term, right? It's pretty much an automated valuation, uh, which is what the other Z thing is. Um, but this is better because it takes your MLS data as well as the public data, and then it adds your knowledge and expertise of the market, right? Those a lot of those automated systems don't have that. That's why this is better. Let's say um, the other one is plus or minus 20%. This is plus or minus 10%, but it's refined further based on the information that you know. So starting with, you refine the value based on the square footage, the bedrooms, bath, you make sure that's accurate because we know that that can be wrong. Um, refining the value. If I came in here and I said, okay, they're going to do a mid-range kitchen remodel. And it defines what that is, right? You even have, let me see, they even have a minor one. They should. Did they get rid of it? Yeah, here it is. Minor kitchen remodel. So this is when somebody comes and asks me, hey, I want to fix up the kitchen before I put the house on the market. And I go, okay, look at, um, what we should do is probably paint the cabinets. Let's do new countertops, new hardware, new flooring call it a day, right? That's a minor kitchen remodel. So let's say they, they completed that in February of 2021. And you want to put the retail value of it. You don't want to put uh, the cost, right? If your client is uh, a contractor and they could do it themselves, or you could do your own kitchen for five to seven grand. But what would it cost for you to hire somebody to just do replacement you know, for paint trim? I would say this is going to be 7,500 bucks. Right, this is a minor kitchen remodel. If it was major, it would probably be double. But let's just add that. See what it does. Okay, so that's fifty-six oh two, roughly 
60%, I want to say, 60% uh, return on investment, right? And then I would go through everything that's done to the house, everything that they put into that home equity estimate, I would put in here. Oh, they replaced the windows. Okay, all vinyl windows. They replaced it. And this one was done in May of 2018 for 10 grand. Whoa, not 100. Survey says $6,373. Okay, and then just go down. Now, you could also, and this is one of the, the one of the last uh, updates they did in the last couple of years anyways, uh, refine the value based on needed improvements. So if the property needed a roof or the property needed something else, you put that in here under needed improvements and it would do a line out item adjustment for exactly what you say that it needs. Now, I would go in here further. Oh, market conditions, fuego, right? Bring it all the way up to hot. That adds $6,165. This property is actually on a busy street, so I might say, I might adjust it either privacy or view. One of the two would get adjusted to inferior because it's on a busy street. And that balances it out between the hot market. Okay, same thing, interior condition, exterior condition. And you make your adjustments there. Now this is just refining the automated value that it has in the system. Um, if I want to do a CMA, I'm going to come in here and go like that. Hit the CMA tab, and give it a second to populate. You then go through just like you would, confirm the facts. Okay. I didn't confirm them. Find comps. Now, just like you would search in your MLS for comps, you can do the same thing here. You could search for a comp that you already know that your client told you about, that house on the street that sold for an exorbitantly high amount of money, uh, you can put that in. But you could also do geography, you could do within this zip, within this macro neighborhood, intermediate, minor, school district, or sometimes you know you just wanna draw a polygon, um, create a new one, and you draw your, your oh, I can select areas in the map. Oh, this is so cool. So they just up the, updated this. It's based on census tracts. So I go like that. I can go like that. And our city is divided into neighborhoods. And so this is pretty good. You can go like that and go through. I'm not going to do it just to save time. But let's say I'm going to go school district. It's typically what I might do. It gives me the entire school district. I don't uh, filter it any more than that. And then I will go search. You could filter it and it is entirely up to you. This is your home equity estimate, right? It's going to give me a bunch of comparable properties, 313 uh, sold properties to use as comps. It then has proximity to your subject, right? 0 0.06. This is right around the corner. This is two streets over. So you can go like this and, and click through. All right, for those of you that know the area, look at Townsend Street. You know what Townsend Street is sold for $120,000. Okay, one on another one on Thompson Street. So for $130, $130,000. So I'm just gonna go like this, update valuation and close, just again for demonstration purposes and to expedite the process. So you're not too bored with me talking the whole time. Um, you can adjust your comps. So what you do when you adjust your comps, you're gonna go in and say, have you ever done a BPL before? A broker price opinion, and you're familiar with this, but it says, how does this subject compare? How does the property compare to the subject? Is it the same? Is it better? Is it worse? Okay, and then it will make oh, this property is well, it's one hundred thirty thousand. This property is better than my subject. This one eh, is better. This one is worse. See, and it makes adjustments to the subject. I'm going to update valuation and close. Boom! One oh eight nine one ten. And you see, like, you can come in here and edit this number. Um, I would edit it because I don't, if I don't think that property is sold nearly to that 123,869, I'm going to put a high point, I'm going to put a low point, and then I'm going to put my recommended sale price or just leave the range. I could go in here and say, okay, um, 999 to 1499. Save. Okay. So you don't have a recommended price because you haven't seen the property. Giving them a range might be a better strategy and say, 
well, it's a range of what your property might be worth. I could always come out and check it out. Whenever you're ready, I'm very busy too. You let me know, uh, we're booking out you know, quite a bit for these home equity estimates. And you're done. Simple as that. I wanna create a report, I'm gonna go here. I love when the internet is slow. You personalize your report, you can add your seller to it. Display now. Okay, here are all the reports you can make. A seller's report is for a seller, obviously. Property report is to help your buyers write better offers. Okay, I used to use that a lot when it was a buyer's market and buyers wanted to lowball their way into stuff. Property flyer, hey, you can make a flyer if you haven't made one. Um, or especially on a Sunday when it's an open house day and you're out of flyers and your market department's closed or the printer's not working in the office, whatever the case may be, you do boom, property flyer. Mini property report, it's a mini version of, of the property report. Uh, valuation workbook, you're not going to use that. That's a workflow for appraisers. They actually use this as a, as a backup to their appraisals. That's how good it is. Then you have a market activity report, neighborhood report, and school report. These are all great takeaways for your open houses. However, since I use a bot, I would, it's part of my open house sign in. Would you like to know uh, the market? Would you like an updated market activity report in an ongoing basis? Everybody always says yes. It gives you something reason to follow up. Uh, you can have your school reports there, and you can have your neighborhood reports. Let me show you what those look like before we finish. Okay, this is a neighborhood report. I did this for 14621 where that property was located. Again, people say, how's the neighborhood? Bro, fair housing. I can't answer that, okay? Can't answer that. Let me just zoom this so you guys can see a little bit better. Um, but you have your neighborhood housing stats and charts. You have median listing price versus listing volume. You have price ranges of homes sold. So it gives them factual data on the neighborhood. It is not gonna give them anything in regards to any of the protected classes, okay? Male-female ratio, I guess, I might be in protected class. Um, definitely. Education levels of population, it has. Uh, population of children by age group. So if somebody says, are there kids in this neighborhood? I can send you a neighborhood report. I'd be happy to. Uh, there it is. Because how can you actually factually, actually factually answer that question? Okay, economic stats and charts. And then, do we still have it? Let's see. Average commute time, how people get to work. This is all really good information. And then walkability. If somebody um, is moving from where, where uh, Jeff, Jeff is from, Jeffrey, who's Maybe he's still on. If somebody's moving from Staten Island or New York where they have a high walkability, right? I don't even have to have a car to walk everywhere and there's public transportation. They move to Rochester, New York, there's going to be a culture shock, okay? Because we have buses, but it's not the same. You're going to need to have a car. Walkability is not high, uh, depending where you live. It is getting better, you know, in different parts of the city. And then you have your market activity report. looks a little different, but it describes the market. Look at uh, median estimated home value change over the last month, 7.99%. Look at that. Change over the last 12 months, 30.14%. Change over the last 24 months, 77.9%. Dude, you want to know how the market is? I would probably take this and light it on fire, right? Like, this is way go. You guys don't even know. Okay, and then um, they call this concentration, you know, it, it's a heat map. So, the hotter it is, that's where more of the distressed properties are. Again, we have a moratorium on foreclosures and, uh, well, New York State, right in the whole rest of the country, actually, uh, foreclosures and evictions. I was watching a, um, a broadcast or a live stream on this conference that I was speaking at by Steve Har Harney from Keeping Current Matters, and he talked about there's over 375,000 people in forbearance. Even if all of those properties were foreclosed on, it still wouldn't be enough inventory to balance out our market, nor it would be enough inventory in order to like crash everything. Like everybody's thinking this whole market's gonna crash. It's not gonna happen. Okay, and then you have uh, sales price and all kinds of other information. I feel like I've been talking a lot, so. <laughs> Give it the DJ air horn, folks. I'm going to come back over here to the single screen uh, and entertain any other questions because I, I don't like to go much past 30 minutes. 
that, that was a, a quick snapshot um, as far as you know home equity estimate and, and I'll post a link to the video that I did so you guys can see it in action maybe you know you're scared of video it could be a post it could be but shoot it's time to get over yourself right just hop on people want to see your personality the more I can talk about statistics did you know that in Chile I did the average sale price is 135000 That's up 11.7% over last year. Eh, even if I'm a brand new agent, I sound smart and I know about real estate, right? This is how you demonstrate it. Tell them about the market. Educate them. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, if I'm not hearing you say anything, I'll play the A-team. Okay, I'm trying to get copyright. This whole thing will be muted. All right, folks. Well, uh, you know, if you're watching this on the replay, put any other questions you have in the comments. I monitor this on a regular basis. Uh, but if you have any ideas of what you want us to talk about next week, we have a couple ideas, uh, but look for it. We try to go every Friday, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So I greatly appreciate you tuning in. California, Texas, Florida. Um, who else do we have here? All over. New York State and Rochester, Saratoga and Chi Town. You guys are awesome. This is Jeremiah J. Man Monero with J Man Speaks. Make it a great day.